a really important part of the historical collections of the City Council is the tribute that it provides for the record keepers of this organisation. And it's really struck me very powerfully in looking through some of the different record keeping jobs that people had as to how different administration was back in the pre-computer era and uh, also the, the sort of weird things that councils get to have to do. Um, I've got some different examples of this here. This large tome in front of me here is the most fabulous record of every house that was sold in Ballarat from 1941 right through to 1973. This is a, a follow-up volume to an earlier version, but this one has all been filled in by hand. It's entitled the Property Sales Register. It's listed all according to each street, and every time a house was sold in a particular street, a file was created to relate to that particular sale so that the rate notices and other things could be adjusted. The date was then recorded about the, um, the, the house that uh, was um, changing hands, the names of the vendors and the purchasers, and then descriptions of the house, the size of the property, and more importantly, how much it sold for. And you can follow through here in street by street detail, everything that um, uh, happened in terms of the sale of properties in Ballarat in that 30 year time frame. Now that's a, a, a wonderful record, but can you imagine being the administrative officer here that had that job? It's all done by hand. Now there are lots of different um, uh, examples of handwriting in here, some of it really good and some of it dreadful, but um, that's just one lovely case of the detail of, of record keeping back then. Another much earlier example is this one which is the record keeping of the Ballarat Pound. Now this is a document which is really quite um, telling about one of the less um, savoury, less um, easy aspects of um, running the Municipal Council and that is recording uh, and uh, documenting the fines that had to be paid for animals that had escaped captivity. Most of it relates to cattle that have escaped from their paddocks uh, around the um, edges of the, the city. And anything from 50 to 150 animals would escape every year. And the fines that were paid were sometimes quite hefty anything from a few shillings up to a few pounds, depending on the, the nature of what occurred and uh, just how, how the council had to be involved in um, getting those animals back into the right place. But there's everything from um, any range, shape, colour, size of cow that you could think of, right through to uh, goats and other, uh, other animals that, that have escaped horses and so on. So there's another one, but this one is a register which ran from 1933 to um, 1968. So followed a format that no doubt had existed prior to the 1930s, but uh, all du dutifully filled out uh, over the years, in this case by a uh, person with a, a superb handwriting skill. It's, um, it's got beautiful work in it. So that's another example of the keeper of the pound that had to record all these details of what went on. Another earlier example again goes back to the 1870s when the city as today was running the city baths. Now at this time the city baths were in Armstrong Street North but every evening the person in charge of this particular uh, register and this is called the abstract of the city baths. Uh, they recorded all the activity going on in, in the baths and for example uh, they would count the number of people who went there for swimming. Uh, they also offered first class hot baths, second class and third class hot baths. You could also have a Turkish bath or a vapour bath and later on 
they had a um, hydropathic bath as well. So all those activities were recorded. Now it's interesting here at the start of the book, <coughs> up to that point in um, 1876, uh, they were, uh, had recorded 5,199 swimmers had been to the baths to that point. But on these cold days of, of August, um, nobody arrived for swimming. And uh, the only people that actually attended the baths on the 27th of August were uh, quite a large number of people, about 30 people who went for a third class hot bath. So that must have been quite a warming, pleasant activity at that time of year. Later on in um, better times of the year in January um, 1877, I have seen the numbers of people visiting were a lot more interested in the, um, in the swimming side of things and you could get perhaps uh, 50 or 100 people attending the baths uh, to have a swim. And uh, there was one occasion here, for instance, um, on the 5th of January in uh, 1877, where 137 people turned up for a swim. And at that stage, um, people who were wanting to have a bath, oh, there was also about 25 of those. So um, they were day-to-day -day records kept. The baths would make anything from a few shillings to a few pounds every day. There are, I think, about six volumes of the, the abstract of the, the Ballarat Baths. and another great example of record keeping at the, at the city. But can you imagine doing all that by hand, keeping it um, under control and reporting back to your manager at the city hall uh, from your office down at the baths. So there you have it as one way in which the records were kept.